view, regenerative medicine is one of the most exciting and important fields of modern medicine. Currently, uh, our approach to treating end-stage failure of several organ systems, such as the kidney, the liver, the heart, uh, the lung, is to perform an organ transplant. My own field is kidney transplantation, and uh, the ideal kidney transplant is from a living donor. I suspect that our descendants may look back on us and say we were rather barbaric that we operate on a healthy person to take out a piece of their tissue and put it into another person, and that's the best you could do. Uh, regenerative medicine creates the possibility of repairing damaged organs without that barbaric procedure of transplantation, which in itself, of course, isn't perfect, even though uh, in many cases it is successful. So I think the capacity to regenerate tissues, either ex vivo and transplant them, or to find ways to persuade cells to regenerate in vivo, is one of the most exciting frontiers of medical practice going forward. And so it made sense, therefore, to invest in a centre such as this that will develop the field in a way that will bring it to clinical reality. I guess the major obstacles are going to be safety concerns uh, and consistent quality assurance concerns uh, and then the logistics of um, performing uh, therapy with cultured cells or gene modified cells or genes um, on a wide scale. But I think it's worth looking back, um, let's say 20 years, 20 years ago, the whole biomedical community was very skeptical about the field of biologics. Biologics involve antibodies and recombinant proteins as forms of therapy. And many were very skeptical as to whether this would ever reach wide clinical application. Uh, and how wrong the skeptics were, because now many of the new drugs that are in clinical trial and likely to come to market indeed many that are in market, are biologics. And so uh, I think the field has demonstrated that it's possible to overcome many of the uh, problems associated with these novel kinds of therapies. So uh, while I think there are obstacles, and we need to be very careful about, uh, of course, about safety concerns, that's the primary uh, concern we all have to bear in mind, and while quality assurance will be uh, challenging, um, I think they are surmountable obstacles. In terms of the logistics, of course, it's very um, good for us that the government has invested in uh, entities such as the Catapult Centre, which exists uh, in the middle of the tower that we're on the top of today. And that initiative is absolutely designed to work out the logistics of how you can scale up um, a therapy that is proved in a small scale trial to be successful and make it more widely applicable um, for a larger number of patients. So I'm not pretending for a moment that the, the, the obstacles have been overcome or the problems have all been solved, but I think there are good grounds for optimism that with uh, the application of the best brains and um, people with the, the relevant skill sets for quality assurance, logistics and safety, um, we will be able to get there. Looking ahead uh, over the next few years, um, I think it's very feasible to imagine that tissues grown from the stem cells of another individual uh, will be fit to transplant uh, into a patient that needs uh, tissue repair. Of course, that is analogous to an organ transplant in the sense that it's a tissue from another person and so the immune response um, will get excited about the foreign tissue in the way that it does to an organ transplant. However, um, I think the more encouraging way to look at this is firstly that the immune response, I would predict, will be less strong than to an intact organ transplant. Uh, and secondly, that we are making progress in manipulating the immune system to tolerate foreign tissues. 
as it happens, my own field of research is in immune tolerance and how we can fool the immune system, make it selectively blind, if you like, to the foreign antigens on another person's tissue. So as we make progress there, and that's being applied currently in kidney and liver transplant patients, so the same kind of approach could be applied to foreign tissues. Looking even further ahead, um, I think the ultimate realization of this field will be to find ways to stimulate tissues to regenerate in vivo without the need to transplant ex vivo cultured tissues. Um, that may well become possible within 10 years as people uh, such as Fiona and her colleagues in this centre unpick the signals that stimulate endogenous autologous stem cells, the ones that we each have, um, to regenerate our own tissues. The reason that I moved from Imperial to King's was that I believed that it was possible for King's to raise its game. And indeed that is what, as an organisation, it has done. My contribution, I think, was simply to raise the level of ambition uh, amongst the faculty, uh, to create a sense of belief that we could play in the Champions League, which I believe we now do, um, and thirdly, to recruit uh, talent, because ultimately it's all about people, and we were fortunate to be able to attract a lot of high-quality researchers, both basic scientists and clinician scientists. Uh, it's amusing for me to observe that uh, Fiona Watt, who directs the King's Centre for Stem Cells and Regenerative Medicine, is someone that I try to recruit very soon after I arrived at King's almost 10 years ago. Um, after making my pitch, Fiona said, that's very interesting, sounds quite attractive, but another UK organisation is building me an institute. I was unable to match that offer. However, I'm happy to say that eight years later, uh, at a second attempt, uh, Fiona succumbed to our charms and is now here. And she's a very good example of the sort of person that makes a huge difference because of the quality of what she does uh, and the quality of leadership she provides. So uh, that is the most important um, thing that has made a difference at King's is the people uh, that have joined the faculty. There are many puzzles remaining in the field of immunology and immune tolerance in particular. If I can explain the question that keeps me awake at night without getting too technical, um, it is this. We all have uh, in our immune systems a population of white blood cells called regulatory cells. And they, are, as the name implies, they're there to control immune responses, to inhibit them and they exist to protect us from autoimmune disease. If you have the misfortune not to have this population of cells because of a gene mutation, uh, there are some human uh, patients that have that problem, then they get multiple autoimmune diseases. If you make a mouse, an, a, a manipulated animal uh, mouse model uh, uh, that lacks regulatory cells, those mice get multiple autoimmune diseases. So the approach that we're using to promote transplantation tolerance is to hijack those cells that exist to prevent autoimmunity and say, can we persuade them to prevent transplant rejection? The puzzle, the question that I don't think we have an answer to is how did those cells prevent autoimmunity without at the same time preventing the immune system from reacting to infections because the immune system exists to protect us from infections. So there's a conundrum. They do very successfully prevent autoimmunity. They regulate that. The same cells that could stimulate autoimmunity are the same cells stimulating infection in immune responses. How does the immune system manage that very careful, delicate balance uh, that means that we protect ourselves against infection, but at the same time we don't get autoimmune disease? As one of your earlier questions implied, we've invested heavily in creating this uh, Centre for Stem Cells and Regenerative Medicine. It's a splendid facility. It's very well equipped. 
Uh, I think it's a really excellent environment to work in. And the thing that will be very exciting about it that I know that Fiona is deeply committed to is integrating, working side by side, uh, what one might call discovery scientists, basic scientists, and clinician scientists who are interested in the clinical application of this field. And I think it will be the juxtaposition of those different kinds of research, all in an academic health sciences centre that makes me excited about the potential uh, successes that will emanate from this floor. Mm -hmm.